Welcome to The Note, I'm Brian. And I, believe it or not, am Ben. What in the hell happened to you? Extra life, man, it was weird. We raised a lot of money for sick kids. I got intimate with Chris. It's a whole thing. You should go watch the video. I don't even recognize my own son anymore. It's crazy. All right, anyway, but we're here to talk about Pokemon, specifically the two newest Pokemon games, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. They're finally coming to the Switch this Friday, but the big question is, what kind of Pokemon games are these? Well, they're definitely a departure from mainline Pokemon games with some new mechanics, replacing the traditional grindy gameplay, which has got everybody wondering, is it any good? Yeah, some fans are worried that the new features in the Let's Go games might go too far to try to woo casual gamers who played Pokemon Go, possibly at the expense of the core Pokemon audience. So are the Let's Go games just casual trash or a cool new direction for the franchise? Let's dive into the reviews. Currently, they got an 82 on both Metacritic and Open Critic. That indicates reviews generally positive. It's kind of in that ambivalent zone, I okay. feel like. Uh, the consensus, though, seems to be that the Let's Go games offer a streamlined Pokemon experience that's definitely, definitely influenced by Pokemon Go. Whether or not that's for you, ultimately a matter of your personal taste. As The Verge notes, these games are meant to be more approachable Pokemon games, meant to capture the attention of younger audiences who never experienced the original games, new fans drawn into the series by Pokemon Go, and older players whose nostalgia will inevitably win them over. Yeah, I'm one of those older players. Eurogamer added, I suspect Game Freak's ideal outcome is you, the old Pokemon veteran, playing Let's Go in co-op on the sofa alongside your freshly hatched little one, spotting the difference between past and present Kanto like you're driving through an old hometown and telling the kids that when you were their age, this was all fields. I had to walk up and down the hill in the snow both totally. ways just to get to the gym for my badge. I'm totally gonna be that guy. Yeah. As for the game itself, it's basically an updated version of Pokemon Yellow, which is a pretty good game. Yeah. The game takes you back to the Kanto region and the original 151 Pokemon are there. Obviously, you start out with a Pikachu or an Eevee and they will not evolve at all throughout the game. God, Pokemon Yellow, back when I still had dreams. Had the little Pikachu stand behind you. I think at some point in one of the versions he could surf. Yeah. Sounds cool. That would be cool. One of the biggest changes though is that random encounters, they are gone. You will be able to see wild Pokemon on the map mm, now. That might kill it for me. And the Let's Go games pretty much get rid of the grinding of traditional Pokemon games. And actually with that, they've kind of lost me. Uh, you don't battle wild Pokemon, you just catch them by throwing a Pokeball using the motion controls of the Joy-Con or the Pokeball Plus accessory. It's a very similar to the mechanic in Pokemon Go. So you don't like that? You I don't, don't like I, it's just not my thing. I want to have the RPG grind. I want to like go catch my Pokemon and have the tension of getting them down to like their one HP, putting them to sleep and then spending yeah. four hours trying to get Mewtwo. And then inevitably when I accidentally kill him, I turn the game off in a rage. You miss sinking hundreds and hundreds of hours into the game. Yeah, that's like the skill. Like to me, that's what Pokemon games Exactly. Are you battle, you battle some more, you keep doing it. But while that might be a turnoff to some fans, Games Radar said that the throwing mechanic to catch the Pokemon instead of fighting them works surprisingly well. Casual. Hmm. Its reviewer wrote, it might feel a bit odd to long-term fans, but actually the combination of this new catching mechanic and battling actually keeps the gameplay feeling fresh and less repetitive in the long run. Hmm. Eurogamer also said that getting rid of random battles puts the emphasis back on collecting, and it makes you have to think more about what kind of Pokeballs to use since all wild Pokemon will flee. Oh. Oh, so you just can't throw like mm -hmm. ordinary Pokeballs. It's about balancing what tools you're gonna use and if the Pokemon's gonna flee and when. As for the motion controls required to catch Pokemon, Eurogamer wrote they are quite fun and surprisingly satisfying with the regular rumbles of the Joy-Con or Pokeball Plus, but also prone to causing unnecessary and unintentional frustration. The occasional ball throw flailing off wildly to one side, maybe because of something you did or maybe not. And that's what that's what gets me about it. Inevitably, this. I'm just gonna end up throwing my Joy-Con into the, either my TV or somewhere in the corner of the Gotta room. Gotta use the wrist strap, son. Uh, experience yep. comes a lot easier too. You get it from catching new Pokemon or through trainer battles, and your whole party gets experience simultaneously. Let's just level everybody up. Why don't you just start everybody at 99 then while you're at it? Casuals. When you do battle though, Let's Go has a very throwback style. No Z moves, no mega evolutions, no held items. If you're used to the more modern mechanics of Pokemon battles, the Let's Go games definitely sound like they have an old school way of doing things. Hmm. Another change is the new games make the size difference between Pokemon very apparent. That sounds cool to me. Yeah, Games Radar wrote, there's something rather magical about seeing an Onix emerge from the rocks of Mount Moon so big it can't quite fit on the screen or seeing just how tiny Pikachu looks against the hulking mass of a Venusaur in battle, or how ridiculously big my smile was when my little player hopped astride my newly captured Rapidash, flaming mane miraculously not burning my threads to cinders. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. 
hmm, that's cool. As for Kanto itself and the updated Switch graphics, that got a lot of praise from reviewers. The Verge wrote, as a longtime player, there's something extraordinary about seeing Kanto in a fresh new detail, with wonderfully detailed 3D visuals that far surpass any of the handheld entries. I can't overplay just how good it feels to play a Pokemon RPG on my TV with an actual controller instead of strictly as a handheld game. Speaking of new touches, the Let's Go games also have a co-op mode, which you can enable by using the Pokeball Plus or just shaking a second Joy-Con. You'll see a second player spawn, but they're just using the same Pokemon roster as you are, so it doesn't really change things that much. They don't like bring in their own Pokemon. Interestingly, the game doesn't adjust its difficulty for two players, <laughs> so adding a second player makes battles really easy. The Six Axis noted that adding a second player turns the game into a cakewalk for veterans, but said that the reduced difficulty is good for kids and new players. The Verge said that the co-op mode is mostly a way to share the experience with a friend. Its reviewer wrote, that's ultimately part of what makes Let's Go so special. Its ability to remake something old into something equal parts nostalgic and charming. To me, that kind of just sounds like, uh, you know, if you have a kid, that's perfect. You can sit down and, you know, go through your nostalgia with your little one and play through the Pokemon games together and make it really easy. Yeah, like, I'm probably gonna buy this game to like play with my kid because mm -hmm. I feel like they would get a kick out of it and I would be like, it was a lot harder back in my day. All in all, most reviewers seem to like the Let's Go games despite all the simplification and despite all the streamlining, but some admitted they're looking forward to a more traditional Pokemon game on the Switch that's reportedly coming out next year. And that will hook me. VG247 wrote, Let's Go is trapped between fans hungry for more of what they already love and those keen to see the series really do new and different things. I've fallen firmly into the latter category for a while now, but Let's Go ended up being something really unexpectedly needed for me. A nice nostalgic palate cleanser before I hopefully significantly change Pokemon experience next year. Did they say keen? Are they like people who go study abroad for a semester and then come back sounded like, God, with an accent. Mm. Sorry, I'm just being grouchy today. I don't know why. <laughs> I am kind of like, but reading all these reviews did get me kind of excited for the game a little bit. It's just not for me. I have nothing yeah, against people that want enough. to play it. It yeah. seems like really cool for people that are trying to get into the Pokemon craze. The, yeah, the yeah. younger kids that never had the red and blue and yellow versions growing up. But for me, I want that RPG experience. And I'm sure I'll get there eventually. What do you guys think of the reviews for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee? Are you planning to pick it up? Let us know in the comments. And for all your Pokemon news, be sure to like this video. And if you're new around here, subscribe to The Know. And our website, theno.tv. You can see Ben, what we looked like when he had a beard. Oh, the good old days. Oh, man. Give me two weeks. It'll be back. Just, yeah, is that how long it takes? I guess one of the families are just, we're the kind of family just, and it's back. It's already kind yeah. of back. Yeah. It's been a day and a half. Don't worry, it's coming back.